Hi everyone, I hope you can hear me. Good morning. I am firstly so honored to be here. I am a Kamcha Kamarelli. I'm a beauty fashion uh, lifestyle creator. I have worked with like 20,000 uh, followers across platforms. I work with celebs like Vipika Balukon, Suhana Khan, and everything. Um, the reason I uh, tell this, I've also won a lot of awards, okay? The reason one being the uh, that Kanaka 25 under 25. But like, you know, imagine a girl who has achieved all this, but like, up to like 10 years ago, I was this super underconfident, insecure kid. And I think today I just want to talk about um, how I, a girl like that, like, you know, 10 years ago, is here right now, has achieved so much, which I don't think she ever, um, you know, thought she will. So, I, I told you, like, I was a really underconfident, insecure girl, and right now, to get her, it was a very, very long journey, a lot of highs, a lot of uh, lows. So, I did my schooling in an all-girls school, okay? So, I was in a bubble for a really long uh, time. I was always this very energetic girl. I think I always knew I had a lot of potential in me. But um, there were always circumstances which held me back. Was to not Like, I was never given opportunities. I never had the chance to do whatever uh, I uh, wanted to do. So, I think... Uh, uh, which I changed later for fighting for myself and I think generally in life I fought for everything I have right now like from a B to just be part of school curricular activities or to have this own career path for myself or to fight to be who I am today for myself doing whatever I am doing today I've like fought for everything I you know have right now and I just want to tell you guys about a tiny such fights right now it might not seem like a really big deal but for that little girl back then it just meant the world to her it just meant everything to her so uh, starting off uh, a, a little story like in school like how many of you guys have play, played sports in school like you know it's not a big deal right like you just uh, if you play if you want to you don't if you want like if you don't if you don't want to but like what if, if you wanted to but like you did not you know circumstances just didn't let you so basically i was uh, one summer, I was like, I think in high school, I started going through this badminton coaching uh, near my house in a local stadium. And uh, I just got really good at it, good at it in like the span of like one, two months. And I knew I was good. And cut to that, like, for, uh, school started, you used to always have these school tournaments. So I really wanted to be a part of these school tournaments, okay? So, um, but that meant for me in my school that for me to be part of any extracurricular activities I have to stay back after school and I used to live like an hour away from home uh, so and I used to travel in school auto with like a couple of girls so that meant the school auto left right after the school was done so at uh, 8th standard I was like okay fine I really wanted to play but like I let it go because obviously my parents at that time could not come pick me or I could not do anything for myself at that moment so I was like okay fine let it go but since that time came and it's the same story again and I knew I got better at it because I was coaching I was training right so uh, again the same thing happened but this time I was like I just couldn't sit and watch I was like I need to do something about this okay I need to like uh, do something to myself so I just went ahead applied for it I don't know how I convinced my parents okay sixth class girl okay can you imagine like I was not all girls school in my little bubble always and then for some reason I convinced and my parents that like you know what I just like travel back in bus by myself and I don't know how they agreed also but they did so I applied for uh, you know playing I went ahead and started going for practice after school then I should like you know walk from uh, my school to the bus stop take a bus go to like you know to my my house again take a share or two again walk and I did all this and not because you know these are some big tournaments or anything it was not like a national game or anything at that point like it was nothing but that even that school thing meant everything to me like to be a part of it okay because I always always wanted to be part of things and I always knew I had potential so cut to the tournaments I did win that year the singles and doubles in uh, badminton and uh, again not a big tournament but it meant the world to me it was the happiest day of my life and I think that was like a huge um, you know uh, moment like a core memory for me in my life because that Meant, like it was like taking actions in my own hands, fighting for myself, 
doing what I wanted to do and making it happen for myself. It gave me a sense of confidence like nothing great. Uh, it just like meant everything to me, okay. So that's just an like, example of a small fight the small girl had during like a schooling uh, uh, time which meant everything to her because it was something she did to prove uh, into herself and to the world of the potential she has. So from like you know fighting to like just be a part of like a school activity to fighting to get rid of an auto driver who harassed me in school to fighting to get into the college I wanted to to fighting to having my own career path and to just fight for myself to be who I am today um, it was a long journey I know I'm using this word fight a lot because I really really believe in it uh, I really believe in fighting and making it happen for you, know, you know, for you yourself. That's my motto. I always say this: make it happen. So um, you know, uh, that's what like you know my little school uh, journey is. But like I think I've uh, talked talk a lot about fighting now, and I think I've made enough fighters for today. Next time somebody comes and says hi, I will be like, oh yeah, or something like that. But um, I just you know. Uh, now like you know let's be fighting aside and I want to ignite some creativity and talk about my journey as a creator and Instagram YouTube creator uh, so far. So um, my uh, journey for being like a creator started in 2017 okay. Uh, I started watching like a lot of uh, content online because as engineers we have a lot of free time we have nothing else to do. Uh, and uh, Instagram started uh, becoming uh, uh, a thing then like you know I used to watch a lot of western creators, a lot of beauty content etc. And uh, right now we call them influencers back then we call them uh, bloggers. I used to watch a lot of content and something about makeup, the art of it, the beauty of it just like drew me into it and I was like really 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 enthusiastic about it so I started making, I used to start doing an extravaganza looks and uh, stuff like that and once a while like once in a month or two months I should like post about it on like my Instagram as well but like I never really thought that I can you know I would like to make this like a profession where I you know, actually start earning money and this is like you know be, going to be like a really big thing in, in my career right so um, anyways after 2019 i graduated from college now like every Indian parents or all families they wanted me to get like a, a safe and secure job like a corporate job not that getting a job is bad but like i just it was never my calling i never thought i was meant to you know i, I like that work I, I wanted to do it so um uh, and like but something about like so yeah, a lot of people wanted me to do like you know masters. Like my sister is in the US, she went in the head and did a masters. People wanted me to do MBA, like all the you know uh, same options for the careers which you have, right? Like I was asked to do everything. Like nobody is asking me what I want to do, right? I felt like so lost. I uh, but for some reason I knew that I always had this interest in the you know uh, entertainment business, the showbiz. It always drew me. Uh, you know, into like that world was always very, very fascinating. So, um, that's what I did. I started making, uh, uh, you know, uh, content on Instagram in 2019. But like, I, I don't come from like a very progressive family, okay? Like, I have my uh, typical Telugu parents. My, my parents, I should give them credit, they are quite progressive. They always gave me support to whoever, whatever, whatever I wanted to do. But um, when it comes to this, of course, it's not a very um, traditional or uh, an everyday job, right? It's not like a normal profession that people have. So back then when I wanted to do this, they were like, huh, you know, I think you need to get a job or something like that. And, but I was like, see, this is my calling. I just made them say, you know, give me six months, right? Give me six months. Let me try, let me prove my work to you guys and uh, let me show what I'm capable of. They were like semi-convinced, like I cried, I argued, I like shouted, like so many things happened. They were like semi-convinced and so said, okay, fine, now I'm going to do what I uh, want to do. My dad still used to insist that I get a job because, you know, and do this for parents, right? Like they were like, you're not going to get a job. They're like, you're not going to get a job. They're like, you're not going to get a job. They're like, you're not going to get a job. They're like, you're not going to get a job. They're like, you're not going to get a job. They're like, you're not going to get a job. They're like, you're not going to get a job. They're like, you're not going to get a job. They're like, you're not going to get a job. They're like, you're not going to get a job. They're like, you're not going to get a job. They're like, you're not going to get a job. They're like, you're not going to get a job. They're like, you're not going to get a job. They're like, you're not going to get a job. They're like, you're not going to get a job. They're like, you know, to this, so I was like, no, I'm not taking a, a job, just give me six months. 
I will, uh, you know, uh, do what I, I know that this is going to happen for some reason. I have this blind belief that it is going to work out, and uh, yeah, so that's what uh, I started doing. My dad still jokes about it, you know, like I really asked him to get a job because now, like, you know, um, I was really leaving for this job, so he was like, See, now in 10 days, when you go, you could have told, like, you know, I had a corporate job, you know, but I was not very happy about it, so you know, I left that job and then I pursued my career in this. So, like, just for a story, I'm not. I'm you know, want to take up a job, okay? So I was like, it's, I, 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 of course, I think that I just like started doing this, uh, um, and uh, yeah, so like, I think, of course, I like, started making content, uh, I, I was really hard, I did everything, but uh, though that was like a difficult journey, I really want to talk about something else first. Uh, let's go back to that little fighter with me who was like, you know, uh, a kid and also I was not just a kid who didn't get opportunities uh, or uh, uh, didn't have, uh, you know, circumstances which on to. I was a really uh, a fat, uh, underconfident, uh, insecure kid. I um, always, always compared myself to my peers who were more skinny than me, who were more tall than me, who were more fair than me, the societal standards of beauty, right? And I always felt so bad about myself. And as a society also, right, the only job as a woman we are meant to do uh, or they make us feel like we have is to be or look beautiful. Like if you look beautiful, like that's your job. Like that's the only job you have as a woman. And growing up, I didn't grow up with that kind of mentality. So like not being or looking a certain way just made me uh, be this very underconfident uh, girl the uh, entire time. So from uh, a, to from so self critiquing, uh, always uh, undermining herself, always feeling unwanted, underconfident, to be what I am today, it was a really, really long journey. Uh, but I told you, like my schooling was uh, bad. Like I had friends that I did not fit in. I always wanted to fit into a group which is not meant for me, which I really didn't understand. I wanted to fit into that popular crowd or that cool kid crowd. And um, not that later I realized, not that I'm not cool, but I'm just a different type of cool, right? And uh, schooling was bad, so I have zero friends from uh, school. And then back to my intermediate is where I found I feel my people. I uh, I found like really good friends where. I felt like, you know, okay, like I'm funny, right? Like I have a personality, like I can love, I, 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 I can, you know, care for people, etc. So, I'm, again, I know this is not external, external uh, validation, but at that time, it meant everything to me to pull out, uh, pull me out of that rut of my uh, self critiquing uh, self. And then I realized how people around you influence you like so strongly and since then till then i'm so 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 careful about the people i let around me like i surround myself with because i know the amount of influence they can have on me right so um yeah that was uh my um you know uh thing but like when i look back at it now i think all that insecurities always led me and always ignited me to do or uh, have this make it big attitude. I always had it, I will prove myself. Someday, you know, one day, I will prove myself so much, like all these people will see what I'm, uh, the potential I have. And I do not know how, I do not know like what I'm going to do, but I always have this. So uh, that's why like, even like the career I have today is rooted from an insecurity. Uh, only like growing up, I always had acne, and it was the biggest, biggest insecurity I had. I had hormonal acne. So, um, the reason, like, of course, like, yes, makeup is all artsy, beautiful, and everything. But the first time, you know, when I put on that foundation, is to cover that, like, little pimple I had on my face, like, to cover that little insecurity. So, uh, right now, when I look at it, like, my insecurities have always been my driving uh, factors to make it to where I am today. So, I think that's what I want to tell you guys. That. So, like, if you channel your energy, like, if you just sit on it and cry on it, they're not going to go anywhere. But if you channel that energy into making that, uh, you know, uh, fight for yourself and uh, to overcome whatever challenge, like, you're going at that, but I'm not, see, okay, don't take my word fight as it says, I look, I'm not going to go uh, ask you to go and fight with your parents, like I want to do phone, I want to go the situation, all like that, but if you have a certain goal, just like, go for it, like, if you believe in it, like, you will go, in, you are going to, you know, be successful at it, don't listen to anybody else. So, uh,
like I told you, insecurities have always been a driving factor, right? So I always had this like try to do something. So as a child, I was also a child artist. Um, so um, not that I did anything or big or any work with it, but I did a few roles. My mom used to take me to this audition and uh, like for shoots and auditions and everything. Like it didn't work out because my dad did like that uh, industry during uh, that time. But I think that made me realize that I always, always want like, you know, like being in front of the camera. Very unconsciously it was always there that I want to be in front of the camera. I enjoy it a lot. But back then it was not in my hands that like, you know, I could make it for myself. I was a child. I, could, I had to listen to my parents. But now, I like creating content is my calling and it's all in my hands and that's what I did. I started making content. I started making content when there was nobody in Hyderabad, uh, you know, doing uh, what I did. I had no example or a guarantee that what I'm doing is going to work because it's nobody from beauty who was doing it or working with uh, Pan India or global brands in fact. So I don't know. Um, for some reason, I had this blind belief that it's going to happen. It was really, really difficult, especially not just India, but there was nobody, like really handful, not a handful of people from South making content that time. Nobody knew the monetary aspect of it. Nobody, so everybody was very, very, um, you know, skeptical about what I'm doing. A lot of people uh, did question me that, you know, do you think it's a sustainable career or anything? But I don't know. I really believe in it. And I, um, you know, went for it. I worked really hard to be like creative, create an audience, a brand value for myself. I'm from Dropstick now, okay? Like, I'm sure you are also like, you know, when I sell makeup and beauty, I, I, I'm sure like a lot of people who roll their eyes because um, it's such a, again, a lot of stigma attached to it and they feel like it's a very fake persona of people. Though it started for me from an insecurity right now, it's just something I love doing. I love the way it makes me feel. I love the way it looks. Uh, but especially in South, even till day, makeup is not common. Uh, uh, you know, thing it's not like girl next door kind of thing. Uh, it's, it's a very overwhelming uh, kind of thing. Like even I, I till day, girls come to me like, you know, oh, I'm wearing this, but you know, I think like my dad would say this or my boyfriend would say this. But if you want to do it, just do it for yourself and like do. So that is a lot of stigma. So with a lot of stigma about makeup comes a lot lot of hate and I've seen all that hate on uh, my social media, social media is uh, you know doesn't stop, doesn't hold back like with, uh, from putting you down and I went through a lot so pretty thing was um, that like all that journey, all that uh, thing I think just again were more of driving factors for me. So uh, looking back at that 22 year old self now I feel she was so silly like because I she had this Blind belief, okay? Blind belief that she will do it. So, but what if I did at that point? Like now, I think, what if it did not work out? What if, like, you know, I, I, I'm not like where I am today. I don't know what I would have done. But back then, that 22 year old Akamsha never, ever even had like a 0.5% doubt about if it's not going to happen. She believed in it and she made it happen for yourself. So make it happen is my motto. I have it in my studio. Everywhere I say this to everybody because if you don't make it happen, nobody else is going to. And having achieved like, you know, all these people, uh, they say you see so I can't believe like, you know, like I'm here, I'm doing this. I usually don't say like that. Like I'm really grateful about the milestones I've achieved, of all the things I do. I'm eternally grateful. But um, I also know and that I've worked so hard for it. So I know that I'm meant to be here, and I'm not really surprised when it happens. Like today, I'm going to say like, yeah, that's like this is my journey so far. I just want to conclude by saying one thing: that um, all of you right here, right? Like just. Don't think about an elephant for the next one. one minute. Like I just give you like, you know, sometime, don't think about an elephant. Everybody don't don't think about an elephant. Okay? Don't at all think about an elephant. It's, can you can you like you know not think about an elephant? It's not possible, right? So because our mind isn't that way, if you keep thinking about an elephant, you only like you know think about an elephant, and that's the same way life operates with obstacles. If you only look at obstacles, you are not going to see the other part which is right there, which you can cross that obstacle and uh, go. So yeah, just no matter what you want to do, don't look at what is. If you know yourself. Even yourself, just like.
Tunnel vision focus and just go for it. And yeah, thank you so much.